School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. So uh, this is the fourth year of a four-year uh, project to look at starter fertilizer. We originally started out interested in phosphorus placement, liquid versus dry, banded versus broadcast, um, you know, different arrangements of nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, the interesting thing is that when you look for sites that are relatively low in phosphorus, you also find sites that are relatively low in potash. And the take-home message from the three or four years that we've been working on this is that if you happen to ignore uh, K levels that have slipped down into the 70, 60, maybe even the 80 range, you can do all sorts of creative things with phosphorus and nitrogen, banding, in furrow, two by two, broadcast, and if you've missed the fact that your K levels have slipped, uh, you really have missed the mark pretty significantly in terms of maximizing corn yields. What has been the yield response that you've seen? So uh, if we're here at Alora, at this site in Alora that's about a 10 for phosphorus soil test and about a 65 for potash, because it was that 65 for potash, we broadcast 200 pounds of potash first before we tried any of the starter treatments. And even with the 200 pounds of potash down ahead of planting, the starter treatments that were the clear winners had some potash in them. And to the point that if you compared the control to a treatment that brought maybe 40 pounds of, of K with them, uh, the difference there could be 15 bushel pretty easy. Okay. So um, if I'm a large guy with liquid then, low testing P and K, uh, and broadcast on that P and K, is there any value to doing liquid uh, starter? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So we we'll use the case study where a grower uh, rents a piece of ground, he gets it soil tested, and he's not great for either P or K. Let's say he's in that same sort of 10 and 70 for phosphorus and potash respectively. Well, our advice for certain, for sure would be on a 65 or a 70 soil test K that you'd want to broadcast potash on that. If I'm a liquid guy, big planter, is there value of bringing a liquid that has some additional potash in that? And so far, it looks like there is. So 624.6 with a little wee bit of potash in there, or a 228.18 with a little bit more potash, but still we're not talking big amounts of, of, of K2O. Uh, has given us a nice bump in yields on those soils that were distinctly depressed from a soil test K. What that number actually is, we're still working on. But it appears that if you broadcast K, that's probably a very important thing to do if you're at a 65 or a 70 soil test K. But it doesn't look like that that is enough that you could still bring a starter fertilizer, even if it was just 624.6 or 228.18, to use a couple of examples. Even if that's all you did extra, that it probably, uh, the little bit of K in the starter actually pays off. And if you're a dry guy, if you have dry fertilizer capabilities, it's a no-brainer, it's broadcast and it's two by two band with dry? Yeah, uh, for sure you'd want to capitalize on your opportunity to bring dry fertilizer and bring more K than what you could bring in a liquid 22018 or 6246. Um, if the land is going to be a short term, maybe one time lease or rent, you can probably get a long way towards maximum yield by putting 40 pounds of K in that dry two by two band and you might, you might not broadcast the potash. Now, if you've got the land under your control for two or three years, well, you're not going to live with a 65 soil test K. You're going to broadcast some K on there to get it up a bit, and you're probably going to still ban some in the two by two.